Good morning, folks. We've got a number of items to hit today on Earth, now and looking back into the past. The only deviation from geophysical review is starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours getting a bit active, filaments popping on the south, same thing with the incoming active region on the north, top left. Few tiny sunspots already on the disk don't really compare to the umbral power we see with that one incoming. Purple line on the solar wind is the plasma speed coming down from the brief intensification, but we are monitoring this for enhancement from the next set of coronal holes. We know the situation in Texas is getting the headlines, but this might be the worst that parts of Oregon have fared as well. Power and water problems, 208 miles of lines down, people using CO producing heaters inside their homes. If only someone had predicted the winters would turn on us like this. We are seeing the effects across the world as well, as Syria, Lebanon, and Israel get a bit more than dusting of global warming. Used to be this would shock people, but it's been six of the last seven winters it's happened. Seismically, we had a day of pretty much just aftershocks of the magnitude 7.7 .7 that struck here some days ago. Did get one above average in Iran as well. Pretty cool animation here, tracking the ozone-related particles. The study adequately tracks the emission of CFCs and other similar pollutants, but falls short of the recently displayed discrepancy between those emissions and ozone levels. The last few years, we have watched Earth's magnetic field and polar vortex likely have a greater role than the chemistry. Similar sort of animation here, but we are looking at primary productivity. Despite the focus on carbon dioxide, the story is really less of a mainstream climate change piece than it is about farming, food, and how plants are starting to notice how much more food is around in the air these days. Up next is an extension of the mammoth DNA, in fact, all DNA in terms of an actual sampling. Teeth allegedly frozen for a million years were unearthed, showing the mammoths were already cold weathered way back then. And by the way, the error ranges on that dating scalably similar to those at the tens of thousands of year scale. Enough to just basically get an idea. Up next, they are looking deeper into how lightning and electric fields within thunderclouds accelerate electrons to produce gamma rays. These are the beginning explorations of the true breadth of electrodynamics of the atmosphere, just like climate scientists are just starting to characterize and quantify the solar wind input to the global electric circuit. By the way, they both have the same finish line. Last but not least, more scientists coming down on the correct side of ocean heat transport. That being, it will shut down with more freshwater melt. The study mostly focuses on the Gulf Stream, but the Kuroshio current does this too, as well as the entire overturning circulation pattern. It's just one of the ways that Earth can take an ice age via heat. And when the ice is locked at the poles, we're just fine. But freshen and chill the oceans, and we're in big trouble. It's the day after tomorrow, that movie just takes more than the Hollywood week it took in that movie. It would start with something small, like defying global warming predictions in one season, like if, say, record cold and snow struck Spain, China, Russia, the USA twice, and the Middle East. Good thing that hasn't happened, right? We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.